Okay. Hi, everyone. I know most people wait until they get somebody in here. <laughs> but I'm going to get my video, my live, started. Um, ooh, I look like I did that pretty good. Uh, so what I'm doing right now, I'm mixing up some potty mix. Because I'm going to up pot. These um these moonflowers. These moonflowers are humongous to be in that little pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repot them up in here. I had comfies in here, but I know it's not comfy, so I hope everyone is doing okay. So, all I'm doing right now is I'm adding soil to these pots here so I can just make a smooth transition. Right now, I think I'm going to do um, two of them definitely is going to have to come out. I think I can leave, so I have four, but... They're getting so big. And I don't know if we're going to have another cold snap. So, I'm going to go ahead and up pot it. So, I don't have to worry about it. So, the first one I'm going to up pot is going to be this one. As you can see, it is really long, and it's two in there. The second one is okay. Um, I think it can stay in a little longer in this particular pot. Hopefully, it do not outgrow <laughs> this pot once I up pot this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take... This container here. I'm gonna put me some gloves on. Let's see. And what I did was I I went ahead and moved all my concrete and um My moringas. I set all that stuff on the kitchen table to make room for the other things that I need to make. Hi, right, Bishop. So, <clears throat> not only am I going to Do some up potty. Whew. So pretty much what I'm doing is already filled two of these up. Definitely I'm gonna up pot two of them. These are the moon flowers because they have actually outgrew their container. So I've already moistened my soil. Um Let's just pray I don't damage my baby while I'm trying to uproot her. But this thing is big. Every time I, I can't leave the next to anything, it keeps latching on stuff. So I'm just going to take my little gadget I have here. I'm not really excited about it, this little gadget. Because I feel, I bet these things are wedged together. So, I'm going to have to, 
I am. I'm going to um oh yeah, we got a lot of growth. This is his moonflower roots. So I'm just gonna take I'm probably just gonna put them all in a bigger pot. Because once I do all this here, I might as well. So I just live because Oh, that was the shell. Because I really had nothing else to do other than do my little planning, my up potting. And I just decided, I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to bring them along with me while I do this. So I don't know who's all growing uh, moonflowers, but I do hope. Um, If you are, hope you find this up potting video helpful. Usually, because like these moonflowers, they grow, they grow fast. They don't play. So you have to make sure. And y'all know normally I have, I use my bigger containers. But I was trying to make sure that I had the right amount of room and space to do all that. So I used my little little pots and they these things kind of took out quick. They didn't waste no time on growing. So I'm just uh back filling it now. I sat it in the new container. So now I'm just back filling it. With some more soil to sturdy it up. Um, and I should end up, I'm gonna end up with four of them. That's how many I planted. All four germinated, which this was my uh, go to option versus the uh, white rose because I had bought. Different varieties with well, different colors of roses to start off to try, and I end up seeing I don't know if it was because of budget or what when I purchased them, but I felt like because they was white, so now this one is potted up, and I'm gonna sit this one to the side while I do the next one and Excuse me. This live, um, this is a, a the moonflower. It it binds, so it's good for trellises. It's good to have um, if you have a trellis or a little netting thing. It's really, really good for those kind of stuff. If you want it, if you like climbers, these are climbers. Um, you have to still be careful because they can be toxic to animals and and humans. As so, it's not saying if you have a moonflower and you touch it, you're gonna die or get sick, but um. They just that's just one of those warning things they let you know that this particular flower can be toxic. It's not an animal killer to say a person would plant this just to get rid of an animal. <laughs> but um you you want you don't want your pets to be gnawing on it. So and it's pretty easy to up pot these here. Um, it's going to climb so much more. I cannot wait till the temperature day for them to be out in the ground. Because these are going to go in the ground. And this is the next pot up. Um, this is the pot that it, it was in. 
So I just up potted them. <coughs> Excuse me. Until I'm able to take them outside. Which I hope is soon. Because. <coughs> Love Lady is running out of room. Um, this new greenhouse, inside greenhouse, is not big as nothing. But I can't complain. Y'all, ice is just falling. I will break my neck trying to get out this room with something else. <clears throat> ben Shed, how's the weather um, where you at? Because I know we're all getting some type of craziness going on. How was your weather? <clears throat> so this is the biggest um oh i can't wait we're getting we're gonna it'll be like saturday Sunday to get to that numbers this is the largest longest uh, moon flower and these tentacles they are so grabby they grabs on things so these these here I really want a trellis, another trellis for these here. And actually, that's what I really bought the first trellis for, is for these. And um, I want to get two more um, trellises. One is for my um, the tomatoes, since I'm trying to grow more tomatoes. And, and one for my cucumbers. Um... If the Lord say the same, I'll get three more. I'll figure out where to put them. So this is the second um, one. And these are the root systems. Root system for this. <clears throat> so I'm going to now divide this one up. And I already put some uh, soil in two more cups, two more pots. So I can actually put these into a bigger pot. And you do want to be gentle, but you can only be as gentle as the plant let you because those roots are it was big. This one here is what I worry about because this one is so big. And I can't wait to see it <clears throat> bloom myself. Have y'all been getting a lot of rain? So this is the third moonflower, and of course, this is the largest one out of um, the moonflowers. I have a total of four, and I just felt like this would be enough. Once it starts trellising and binding, they're going to fill out. And the, the, all the pictures that I've seen, they can, they can be invasive, so you have to also be careful. You can... Um, Plant them in containers, but again, you know, you have to be careful. And they are annual, so they were supposed to die back every year. You have to replant them every year. Um, but they can be really, really nice. It just depends on how you do them. I personally kind of want to see um, how they would look 
in the front of the trailer where the where the bar is at to kind of you know beautify that little thing. I just hate how that look that hitch. I just hate how it looks. You know, it just looks so plain. Not the fact that it's a hitch, it's just it looks plain right there in that area. And I've been wanting to grow something uh in that little V where the hitch is at for a long time. And every time I try to kill back those weeds, those weeds are something serious. And I have dug, I've dug. Hi, Katana Crop, how are you doing? I'm sitting here doing uh re up potting my uh moonflowers. So I was just talking about me wanting to plant them, planting something in the front of my trailer, my mobile home, where that hitch is at, because I just, I just want to make it look nice and just instead of plain. But these are moonflowers, and moonflowers are so evasive, invasive. So this is. I have four moonflowers. I just potted up the moonflowers. And uh, they're not playing. They're moving fast. So now that I have those potted up, I do want to, um, I am uploading a video to you guys. Just trying to do a lot of things at one time. Um, just a uh, trying to do something different this is my first year that i would be doing more flowers i will say that i'm gonna put this on private and see i'm ready to release this one but um now i want to go i'm, finna, I'm about to go into uh doing my and these will be on the inside until they're ready to go outside so now I'm going to take my 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 stackables and I'm going to put as much as I can because I will um, I would end up having to go outside regardless to do it. I'm going to in these stackables I'm going to stack them as high. I have 12, no 11 of these in this color. Now I don't know if I'm going to use all 11. I would love to. Um, from the video I seen of someone else doing it, I'm gonna actually fill this up with petunias. So I love the way those petunias was looking. I've always said I wanted some more flowers, you know. Good afternoon, Miss Missy. So I'm gonna uh, try my hand at doing some petunias in my uh. Other flowers are doing well. So all of these flowers are going to be on the inside. I do have, um, I'm going to tell you guys kind of like the flowers that I'm, I'm about to start and which one I've started already. So I've already told you about the echinaceas. Like all the flowers are my first. In exception of zinnias and marigolds. And unfortunately, I have not even started them yet. So... Echinaceas, Sweet Williams, and Violas, I think that's what it is. I started them, and they're already up. They already took root. They're doing good. Um, so, I'm going to do some Alaska Shasta Daisies, and these are perennials as well. And I, I've been trying to find perennials more. Because I don't want to have though I don't want to have to do them every year, plant them every year, uh, maintain them is one thing, but plant them from starts, yeah. And sometimes some perennials it takes they don't always bloom that first year. Sometimes it takes them until the next spring to 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 bloom. But I'm gonna try my hand with putting these over there in that shaded more more of a shaded area um in the front it gets some but it just don't get as much sun so i have just a regular dollar perennial mix um i'm just gonna probably sprinkle these out and this mix have some of the same flowers that i am 
uh, starting, which is good. So it gave me an opportunity to see how they're going to go. I know I'm going to sprinkle these where my irises are at in that bed, just because it'll give that bed even more uh, color. And I might see how they would work over there in that shade area. I'm just going to go flower crazy, pretty much. These are how the Sweet Williams look, the colors. So I would love to see that purple uh, bloom. And these are the petunias that I'm going to do. So these are annual. Um, I do. I have several other flowers over there that I'm going to be doing. Um, this is the rose that I bought. It's an Arizona. So I already potted this up, which I'm happy about that. Yeah. Uh, yes, Missy. The purple is really, really nice. I love the purple. Um, for a long time, I was always into dark stuff, and I've been trying my best to come out of that because people think when you wear a lot of dark clothing, you know, like you're into that other stuff that uh, most of these young kids and people are into, but that's not me. Um, I have so many flowers that my husband is going to really think I'm really crazy. That's okay. He probably think I'm crazy anyway, but... Uh, I repotted my cactus. Oh my gosh, that polar cactus! This brand is I don't want to say brand new, but when my, whenever my washer is on and they get on that spin cycle, it shakes this whole mobile home, and it fell off my little shelf I had over my desk. So I just decided to go ahead and repot it now, put it in a bigger pot, and that's where you know it's good for a while. So. So we're gonna get to it on the gonna fill this little thing up. I don't know how much soil I have that's gonna make it. But and what let me tell you what I mix, what I use to um make my seed starting mix. I use my jiffy. Because a lot of people think it takes a whole lot to make up a mix. Everybody had their own remedy. But I got the Jiffy C30 mix. I got the Dollar Potting Soil. This is my trash. From the Dollar Store. And some vermiculite. And the seed starter mix, as you know, already have a little perlite in it. And the uh, also have the nutrients you will already need to for your plants when it's trying to thrive, trying to grow. And just the dollar the dollar store potting soil, it's I have no issue with it. Some people have a preference. I have had no issue with no soil I have bought. <laughs> To go on my outside or inside. So, again, to each his own, you know, but when you're talking about budget, and if you've been, most of us here, hey, TT, most of us here have been gardening for a while or at least a year or better. And you have some that's just starting out. But to me, the best advice you can give someone just starting out, don't tell those people. New people that they have to get a certain brand because what may not work for you may work for them. You know, um, everybody's pockets are not the same. So be mindful that if you're going to be helpful to them, don't advise them to go and buy the, buy the most expensive brand. Now, in your experience, a certain brand probably have worked for you better. But also think that we we are not all in the same climate or well area zone. So you may have certain bugs or certain things that's coming around your your area than than they do. 
I mean, start them off on a budget because we know that gardening can get expensive. It can be fun and rewarding. It can be life changing. But it also can get expensive, you know, and letting a person know or think they have to get the jiffy. I also have my dollar store seed starting mix as well. Sometimes when I'm in the store, I'll just go, if I see something that I feel like is reasonable, I just pick it up, just just extra, you know. Um, even if I've never tried it before, I, you know, I kind of look and see what is, what's in it. But I, I personally try to garden on a budget. If I cannot find it at a reasonable price after I have did my research, then I'm like, okay. No, oh my gosh, you better stop. The cornbread mix, oh gosh. Girl. Girl, I I know they uh now you see now they do have another seed starter mix that is in a yellow yellowish container I mean like that and it's not jiffy but in my experience I have never had an issue with none of those topsoil soil compost manure. I've never had an issue with none of my stuff. None. Some people say that they had rock sticks, uh, whatever. And I'm not saying it's not true. Um, Sometimes it depends on when you went to that store, where they had it sitting at. Um, if you check for any uh, rips or tears, anything can crawl in there. Um, so you just have to be careful. How you doing, uh, Lioncrest? But... Do not tell a new gardener that they have to, or, oh, you need to get some Jiffy, or you need to get this, you need to get that. I mean, it's okay if you let them know that that's what you use, but make sure they understand that it is other options. Um, I also use the Cocoa Core uh, Seed Start Mix as well, and sometimes you may not even have Seed Start Mix. You might only have the dirt you have. Sometimes you got to drop it and just see what happens. Because back in our uh, grandparents' days, they didn't have all this fancy stuff. You know, they had nothing but Mother Nature, the ground, the earth. You know, but whatever was in it, that what was in it. So, anyway, um, I'm going for what I know <laughs> on these flowers, guys. So, I really, really, really wanted some flowers and I felt I've, I've, I've been having some of these things like for a long time and I say you know what now that we're buying this this freaking mobile home I say okay you go ahead on and now you you do whatever little outside upgrades that you want so many things that we now can do because we're buying it um, it's not on a lot of land, of course. You guys know what space I'm, what kind of space I'm working with. But I believe in making use for uh, with the space that I have. And that came down to how can I utilize my space um, better uh, and more efficiently for me. I am terrified of bugs. And I remember when I first said that, you know, people was making, not necessarily about me, but just in people in general. You can't be scared of bugs and you gardening. Look here. That's not true. I just had to learn how to improvise with what, uh, Yeah, I'm just filling up these things. That's what I'm doing. Seeing how many I can fill up with the soil, the amount of soil that I have. Uh, but, hi, Pits. How is Vegas weather? So, yeah, I don't have one of them 
them crunk lives like some people do. I'm sorry. I don't know how to go about doing that. Lion Crest, form a cube. I can't, I don't know how to do all that. I mean, I do, but I ain't ready to be getting out of my comfort zone uh, being silly. Everybody ain't ready for love lady silliness. I'm so used to being uh, in class and having to be professional <laughs> that sometimes I lose my, my little silliness. Those that live with me know I'm I'm goofy. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna plant the petunias in these stackables because I really liked it the way I seen uh, the video of a guy using it um doing hens in a stackable and it was beautiful, you know. And right now my goal is to possible put keep them on my porch. Uh, because I, I would love for it to look appealing when you, you know, I walk up my porch or visitors or whomever. Um, I might I might put some out in the front, but I don't want to overdo the front because I am going to sprinkle those perennial mixes out there and put those sweet leaves and stuff out there. But this year is going to be my flower year craziness. And if I like it, I'll continue doing it. But if I don't, then it'll probably I'll probably do it a different way. Oh, one of them, the Sweet Williams and I don't know if it's the Echinaceas or the Dasta. One of them, the Sweet Williams and the Violas. I'm gonna I'm I am gonna put them in. See if I can reach them. I am gonna put them some of them in, in some of the pots I have. So I have a enough of them. I do want them, so I want to see how they're going to grow on the porch and out, outside in the front to see which way I like it better. And yeah. But as far as working with what the space that I have, I I've learned that I know I have a lot of space, like some people, but what I have learned is that I have more space than others. So, with that being said, you know, I, I do try to show others that even though you do have a small space, that you still can grow. You may have to grow differently in different things, which is containers, um, as well as if you're scared of bugs like me. You might want to not be in the ground because it is bugs in the ground. Um, but me growing into my elevated raised garden beds as well as my containers, that is for my purposes for us as the years go by, it's not so hard for me. And I know I had a medical journey myself. So so um I knew that putting stuff in the ground was not going to be life longing for me. And even though I tell people I'm two shakes from 50. So with all the trauma, my body already withstood and I am now aging that I feel like I could feel those uncomfortable uh, positions when I'm bending or having to squat or kneel. So I I actually prepare myself how I can actually handle it if need be. You know, um, I kind of feel, in a way, I kind of regret. I ain't going to say I regret it. I got that new garden bed. It was a gift. So, of course, you know, as a gardener, you're going to, stuff like that, you're going to be like, yeah. So I have that garden bed, and I am going to put it to use, of course. But I know that in the long run, I don't know how useful it's going to be for me because I know the bending I'm still going to have to do with it eventually. And even though the guard, the elevated raised garden beds, you know, you have to still keep keep them up. You know, you can't just let them feel like you put them together now. They they find 
but I built them things to suit the needs that I was going to need them for. And believe it or not, I think I want like three or four more. But again, my husband will freaking die. And I promised myself I was not going to build any more until my water situation was fine because it's still not fine. But I do know that that big old thing is filling up finally. And I'm now going to get me a pump for it. My husband said, babe, after this winter storm, he said, babe, what we need to do is so we can get water coming out of it. And I told him. And it's, I could have probably been had it, but sometimes certain things take priority over others. So how many of these things did I fill up? One, two, three, four. Five of them, well, four and a half, until I open up some more uh, soil. So, put this to the side. Yeah, I'm trying to keep this little room clean, but it's not easy. It's so little. Okay, let me whew, put this to the side. But yeah, in the um that bed there, you know, when I got it, the first thing I thought about was my okra. Cause I plan on planting way more okra. Cause I actually planted like nine last year. And again, it's just me and my husband. But if you've grown okra before, then you know you need more than nine plants because they're never going to be ready at the same time. You, you may have two that's ready to come off, and you have maybe two or three that may come off in two days. That, no. So this time, I'm, I'm shooting. It's a stretch. But I'm going to shoot for 15. I did nine. So I'm going to shoot for 15 okra plants this year. And... This is my first year growing eggplant, so I'm going to put the eggplant in there as well. That That's the goal is put the eggplant, the okra. I'm not doing corn this year. I, I'm just not going to struggle with that. Um, if that happens, these seeds are little. Dang. Only way that happens is that I get that pump for... Um, For that water tower. So. Yeah. And then this year I'm also. Oh Lord. I'm also growing way more tomatoes. Than I've ever done. So pray for me on that guys. Because. Let me tell you. I hear the horror stories about that big group. Never had that issue so that is going to be a problem for me to see that theme i do not want to have any encounters with no hornworm that makes my flush crawl thinking about it Yeah, these petunia seeds are so little. It looks like dust. They don't look like seeds. So, but yeah. Um, and then I need to. I'm gonna clean that red trough out, and I'm gonna use um that trough for something different. Um, I hadn't finalized what I'm gonna use it for, but I am gonna use it for something different. And the red trough was gifted to me as well. And all of this is going back to saying, you know, make sure that you are advising new time, first time gardeners that they don't have to have the most expensive thing. 
You can grow with anything, okay? Um, and I've learned that. And as you evolve and you you start knowing how to keep a plant alive, then, yeah, I can see you saying, hey, you know what? Now I want to, you know, do some more stuff or have some more things I can plant in. But the first goal is to learn, learn how to keep it alive. Because I'm going to tell you, the very first time I actually started, which it hasn't been that long, I still feel like I'm a new gardener. I know I am. I have a lot of stuff that I'm I'm still trying to learn myself. Just don't fall tower. But the new the red trough was gifted to me by a coworker. They was uh she was um getting having a going through a separation and she gifted that trough to me and I was like wow and my mind already knew you know because by now I've been growing for like a right over a year. Like, oh I can do this 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 with that but it was free. Okay, I didn't have to pay for that. Uh, she not only gifted me that, but she gifted me uh, a brand new four hundred something dollar uh, propane grill with the torch, an extra two two propane canisters, one with the torch on it, and uh, the one that came with the grill. I was blessed with that one, and she gave me two hot terracotta pots. Um, one of them just recently broke. And the other one, I do grow my basil in it a lot. But as the uh, the new box, if you look up, it came from Home Depot. I want to say that thing was either $1.99 or $2.99. And McNeil, which everybody that, that follows me, knows McNeil is the teacher that I assist at school. And she's just like family. Um, no matter what I'm doing, she's always trying to donate something towards it, put something towards it. And she actually um, gifted that to me because she ended up with an extra one. The people wouldn't even take it back. She was trying to give it back. So she said, you know what? I know um, someone that uses she And she told me, she said, hey, I got two of these here. Do you want one? I'm like, she's saying, it, don't, it ain't going to cost you nothing. They have, it didn't cost me nothing. So, of course, me, I'm like, sure, <laughs> you know. But I said, okay, well, you know, her birthday had just came up actually yesterday, in which she gifted that to me like two weeks ago, whenever y'all seen me put it together. Uh, but she she will never accept anything I try to give her. Well, she she take the jellies and you know she like all the stuff like I can and whatever so she she gets that but she tell me all the time she said well you give me enough you know you always you know you, you dedicated the bed to me you always bringing me vegetables you always bringing me jellies and, and canned food that you can so she said no I, I'm good she don't want I can't get her any plants because her husband said she have enough power but one thing she did tell me she said I can do for her, which it just it just it made me feel happy because it's like wow that that's that's nothing. She just want me to help her. Um, she want me to start her some okras. I got tons of okra seeds, and all I have to do is start them when I start mine. As well as she um, the okra, and it was something else she wanted me to start for her. That I've, I already have. And that's what she's going to put. I've already gave her tons of mint. Because she loves mint for her teas. Yeah, Sam's have a garden section. Hi, Broke Farmer. How are you doing? So, anyway, the... um. I'm just planting, um, I just planted up my moonflowers, and I just planted up my petunias. I'm trying to plant more, um, flowers, you know, um, we focus on a lot of food, which is always great. Um, I'm trying to learn how to plant more flowers to, um, 
for the aesthetics as well as possible the pollinators. So um, I already I have the the marigolds down pack, the zinnias down pack, um, but I wanted to make sure I put a more color into um, my garden space, into my mobile home that me and my husband just started purchasing. We've been here like three, three and a half years. But with this pandemic, um, I told him, I say, it's not, he wanted to get a house. I'm like, it, it doesn't make any sense at this point. Not right now. It's not safe to do so financially. So I felt like staying where we was at was better until we really knew that we would be okay if we went into the the house house um, environment because with people losing their jobs and stuff, I just felt like we need to stay put. We have to learn to stay put sometimes. But yeah, beginner gardeners, it doesn't matter what um, soil you use. I'm not gonna tell you you're not gonna have to you you're not gonna have any problems or you're not gonna have to go uh through more than one variety to find the one for you. But for me, all of them been the one for me. I've never had an issue with not one piece of soil. So you don't have to have the most expensive. Um I've learned to plant in anything. I get I get these little containers from school. Um, they give out uh, twice a week or three times a week. They give out fresh uh, veggies or fruits to the kids. The kids don't even want some of the stuff. They give out like bell peppers. They give out tomatoes, um, dried watermelon, dried blood orange. They give them a lot of, of fresh fruit. These kids are not even used to eating the fresh stuff. So... They know. Don't throw nothing away. Give it to love, lady. <laughs> so all the bell peppers and all that stuff like that, I bring them home and I um put them in either in those in the container. If they come in a little bags, then I put them in these containers because I've been to have extra. Um, the cherry, the cherry tomatoes that be in here, and especially now that I know how to can. So I actually can stuff now too. So I find a win-win in every situation right about now. Um. Oh, so use what you have. I can in these little square pails. All you have to do is put holes in them. Um, I think as long as they're over a two, um, you're good because not everything you can plant in. Let me make sure. Let me look at that number. I think that number is two. They normally have a number on the bottom. Of all the plastic containers, and that lets you know if they're food grade safe. Okay, um, I've planted in I sure hope nobody not acting a fool in there. I bought these little containers here, they was 10 cents. At, at two years ago at my local Salvation Army and I was in my first year I think I was in my first year of gardening or just went into like my second season and I had um I seen them and my eyes you know as a garden I'm like oh I can use them you know because I was thinking and learning all the different things that I can use to plant something in I it, I bought the first like 35 of them costing me three dollars and fifty cents so i was so excited because i had so many i was like man i don't need to go and buy the little starter cups at all no more so i end up going back there for another reason and i end up getting the rest of them she said like, you want the rest of them we'll give you a good deal on the rest of the whole box it was a nice size box excuse me and say so sure i end up paying I think like maybe I'm gonna say seven dollars or forty cents. So I mean it was fifty four more. And I mean you gotta think I spent less than ten dollars on about thirty five fifty, almost almost a hundred 
nice size. I think they're maybe like two, two ounces, not two ounces, two inch pots. I think there was two inch or two and a half inch pots. But my first year, everything was I've learned after, because I, I researched the first year, research, 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 all the different things before I got deep into a lot of stuff. I research on what I can use, what was cost efficient, you know, and I wouldn't have known that if I didn't do my research, but I did do my research. So I bought them. I knew that was a good deal. Um, I did like everybody else. Went out, bought my neem oil for the bugs because, you know, I'm scared of bugs. But unfortunately, and I'm going to say unfortunately, honestly, I don't even use it. I want to use it to mix up with my seed starter mix. I haven't used that since the first year. I tried it to get out there and do that, and that was just too much time for me. Now, somebody else may have a lot of time on their hand. I'm not going to go out there before dawn. I'm not going to go wake up early to go and spray that garden. So, hi, Nikki. <coughs> So the neem oil, I don't, I have never used BT, DT, ET. I have never used that. Um, I don't use anything. Um, I'm not saying that everything is perfect, but what have worked for me is just doing a daily check of my garden, snipping off what I need to snip off. Um, because I don't care how much you spray it down, something is going to eat on it somewhere. That's just what it is. And again, it, it made me start thinking back to our roots that our grandparents didn't have that kind of stuff. Our great grandparents. I watched my grandmother garden for a little time. You know, I wish I was smart then to um to pick up some habits, but unfortunately I was I was young. I didn't really know better. My grandmother's old school, don't get in her way. So a lot of stuff I had to pick up on my own, but I did, you know, watch my grandmother go through the process in our backyard do her garden and she real country she won't scared of nothing but I do use like the peroxide I'm looking at my stuff you know what I have my peroxide I do use my fertilizer um both granule and water soluble um I did pick up some what's that root hormone stuff because I was trying to do the, when I got the cuttings from Pitts and um, Best Yet. So, and Best Yet, I know you've seen my video. My lemon tree is getting some leaves on it. And my other one, let me see. This is the, this is the baby one. Uh-oh. And I don't, I can see, it may be hard for you to see, but here this one here is is getting leaves as well it's getting the first little fuzz of leaves so i'm very 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 excited about that and i'm just waiting on my other one i think that's my fig tree pits i think i'm waiting on that to get some more life back into it because that one was blooming and it was another one i showed you that had started blooming so what works works you know at first I didn't know whether it was going to do anything because you know it looked dry at first but then I did everything that it said to do and I just had to wait and it start catching so I was excited about that and then with me not ever doing it before I had number time on that just to wait for it to do whatever but back to the new gardening stuff so the, the more experience I got with learning how to grow, because I used to have what they call that brown thumb, I would kill an ivy plant. I just didn't understand what I was doing wrong. Who knows? I still don't know. But I put a lot of effort, a lot of energy in researching the things that um, I wanted to know how to do. Um, from, a, from different um, YouTubers, books, um, just going by the different stores, asking questions, and just that's how I really learned how to do some of the stuff that um, I am being blessed to uh, grow 
And then I start learning the things, like I said, other things that I can use to grow the pools. I first seen that on uh, Roots and Refuge. I really like the way Jesse um, had um, showed how to what you can grow in them. I wouldn't have never thought of that, but I ran across her video and I started um, watching a lot of things that she was doing. And it really helped me a lot, you know, understand it was questions that, you know, I had and it was easy for her to answer. I didn't feel like my question wasn't going to get answered. She pretty much had a video for all of that, you know. Um, so that was one. That's how I started using the, the kitty pools. And in that kitty pool, so far I've I've grown my greens, I've grown carrots and peas, I've grown um, peppers, and now I'm growing the bok choy and of course some more greens. So they're good for herbs as well. So if you have never tried using the kitty pool, <clears throat> it doesn't matter the size. Just make sure you have your hose in and your drainage. They they work wonders. Now you also can use your kitty pools, and you do not you you can have the drainage, or you don't have to have the drainage, but you can actually put your grow bags inside that pool, or your Walmart uh, reusable bags um, that you plant in, and just sit them inside that pool, and you just water that pool and let everything soaks up, soak it up. Those bags will soak up all that water. That's still just like if you was bottom watering, okay? So that's another thing. Um, I've seen so many people have great success with that. I've even seen people grow corn up in there. And I'm like, whoa, you know, because corn needs some, you know, needs space to get down up in there. But I've seen people do that. They put the, uh, they also put the five gallon buckets up in there. Um, of course, with the hose. So it's so many things you can do with those pools. And I like them because of, they have some of them come with different colors. And I've really been trying to brighten up my space because a garden should have color. When I think of a garden, for me, I think bright and happy thing. That's supposed to be my happy place. So I just didn't want mine to be just so bland. Put a little something in it. And each thing that I have put in it was budget friendly. <laughs> it was... Um, and, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I mean, because you got to think, man, it is expensive. You're already buying soil. You're already buying uh, compost for the, for the ones that, um, like me, I'm not composting in place. Um, I think a lot of reason, because those little worms and stuff come through there. I'm sorry, guys. I just, some things I just can't do yet. I ain't ready. But. I know I've been rambling, but and I can't see already, so I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. If you guys are planting flowers and stuff, put it, you know, put it in the comment. Let me know what you guys are growing or something that you like that is easy to take care of. Remember that where I'm at, for those that, that, that do know, that it gets really, really hot and dry here. So, it's not a good thing. I'm going to do something. I know I, I, didn't, I wasn't planning on doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to put one, two, three, four of them have the petunias in them. And this top one, I got to put some more soil in them. I'm going to put some of this perennial mix at the top because it's going to be a mixture of colors and I want to see just how that's going to look so but yeah um I know Nikki was telling me did you tell me hostas was a good uh shade loving flower really yeah, Missy, I thought about that too. But I do know, if I'm not mistaken, don't you gotta go and turn that uh that stuff, that compost. And that's the problem I'm gonna have. If I go out there and be trying to turn that compost, 
and some crawl or wiggle out of there, I ain't going to be good at all. Really. I don't know about that, Missy. I have to think about that. But don't. Um. I think about that. But how do you? So how do you? You you compost it. I mean, but how do you use the compost though? Don't you have to scoop it out? <laughs> And I think sometimes that's a lot of my issues. I am so scared of critters. You know, I'm scared to try it because I don't want to see the critters. And people say, that critter don't want you. I don't know. To me, they do. It breaks down in the dirt. But, okay, if it, how you doing? Okay, I get the, I know, okay, I know the compost is good. I'm not knocking that. And I know, like, uh, Grown with Donnie said, they have tumblers. My thing and my question is, at some point when you go and mess with, okay, you, the tumbler, I get it. It's going to shake it around. But ain't there worms up in there? It's, it's a critter in that, in that compost, right? That's where my issue come with the critter, with that worm. Even if it's a good worm, I don't care. I'm scared of, for example, if I have some cucumber skins, I would bury it in the pot next to the plant and leave it. Okay. No worms because it is fresh kitchen sprouts. Oh, okay. See, that's, that's, that's what mentally... See, if you don't ask the question, hi, Renee's Garden, if you don't ask, you won't know. And I'm going to tell you, that's why I have not done that. Because mentally, I'm thinking those worms going to come and be in that stuff. And I, I can't do I, I would have a panic attack. If just, just the bugs. Mm -mm. So if I, start, if, I, if I put some scraps... In my, in, I have a, I have three black trash cans outside. One of them, I already have leaves in it because I said, okay, I'm going to see what I can do. I need to learn how to make my own compost and all that stuff. So I have that little trash can. So if I go put, if I keep putting kitchen scraps, I know you can't put meat, stuff like that. I know you can't put that kind of stuff in there. So if I put that in that trash can and I put the vegetable, you know, all that stuff in there, I'm not going to have no worms. Okay, so you say, I'm glad you asked. They would be in the container, but you would not come in contact with them until the next year, next plant. Them, see, what you mean by them, Missy? See, that means there's going to be a bug in there. No worms if you're compost inside a container or Okay, so when I move that shovel in that garbage can where well, I'm composting, I ain't going to see no little wigglies, right? Because I'm going to tell you, little lady going to pass out. I can't, I'm not going to be able to take it. Not the trash can in, in your plant container so you can't. So don't put it in the trash can. Okay. Because like that trash can, I'm not doing anything with it right now. 
that's not the ones I was using to um collect water. Um, but I do have holes and stuff punched into it, you know, so it can ventilate. So do not use a trash can. Well, I ain't seen no bug in my in my raised bed bitch yet. Don't don't start that. I know TT. I mean, they don't get it. I mean, some people don't. Get, I can't take it. And I'm trying. I'm. I know it seems far. Man, I'm trying to learn. You can also just do like lead and lay it in the and just make your own compost tea super cheap. I mean. That part I'm finna start. I'm gonna try to learn how to do is the compost tea. I am. I'm working on that. It's just I am. That's what I'm gonna do. That's why I'm making sure I'm growing my coffee and you know my uh, borage, all that stuff like that. So I am trying to think ahead on that. Okay. Missy, that's that sounds like a good idea. I, I probably can try that. I just have to remember um do that. So if you do it in your um in the crop, just say like, you know, I have all raised elevated beds. So if I do I could just pick a corner, I don't have to do it all over the the thing. Yeah, um, and I, I, I do want to, I, I, yeah, I do want to try to do that if, Missy, if you're saying that putting it right there in the, inside the bed, well, I don't have to really touch it no more. That's fine. Okay, I can try that. I mean, I I try that to do it because yeah. Girl, a frog. Y'all don't understand. I, I take anxiety medicine. They don't even work. I I take the low dose because I gotta drive and go to school. But girl, I can't do it. My husband say he just don't get it. He used to, he asked me the same question everybody else asked. How you gonna garden and you scared everything? Hey, 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 Missy. Them stump the yards come in handy now. Oh Lord. That Snoop called them stomp the yards. It's his fault they call that. But I tell you what, when you as you getting older, they do help once you learn how to use them because you don't have to really have to use that that a a, a regular tiller or that shoveling hole as much. Once you learn how to use them, you they come in handy. Yeah. All right. All right, bitch. Yeah. Um, I ain't stomping. See, that's the thing. I'm not gonna even kill the bug. Fear factor, girl. No, they can. They can. No, it's not enough money they can give me to be a part of that show. I won't even make it probably through the introduction. We have, we have, um, I'm not going to say it's not any here because for those that see the, the kind of uh, area that my trailer is in, it's not 
terribly wooded or anything like that because it's just really from the trailer to the left of me to the dead end that we have we actually have trees but we have my husband have seen armadillo um i've seen one or two squirrels and i have we have more cats than anything so I have the twins, guys, and then my grandbabies come on their way. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to be in trouble. Them kids. My husband's going to die when he get home. I can't. I, mm -mm. If I see one, unless I feel trapped, if I walk into that space and I didn't see a bug, but when I get at the, deep up in there and I see a bug, I automatically like freezes to figure out, okay, how do I get out? You know, what can I do to get out of that gate? And my husband get mad because he said, why do I always leave my gate open? Because he don't get it. I got to have a good path to run. Hi, Joy. Joy, I went and bought me a box of red wine. Do that count for a cocktail? It was so cold, I had to warm my blood up. So, guys, yeah, I just planted one, two, three, four. Five, I got to put some more in this one. And this, this one here, let me turn it around so you can see. This one here, it came from, uh, these came from Family Dollar. And I didn't even know they had them. I just so happened to went, went in there for something else. And... They own that particular store I went to only had 12 and I picked all 12 of them up and I already had ordered a stackable from Amazon and I had been to the dollar store and picked up 15 of them. So. I just donated five of them to one of my coworkers, but but yeah, I know I got off track on something I was talking about. Oh, my nose is itching, y'all. Um, so now I got to replace my greenhouse outside instead of doing the greenhouse that I have. Now that I'm gonna have to get a new replacement cover. Am I going to say I'm going to just totally get rid of that particular one? Now, I kind of want to get a bigger one to not necessarily cover the whole fenced-in part up, but they have that I that can stretch almost that length, and in the summer, I can use a shade cloth, and then in the winter, I can use the actual greenhouse cover. So that's what I'm thinking to do with that on the outside because the the summers are really, really hot here. We don't have as we really don't have cold winters. This was just a excuse me, a surprise. So how did all you guys anybody had uh lost anything in their garden during the uh snowstorm? Ben Shea, you at home?
No. How do you I'm gonna mess something up in a minute. <clears throat> yeah, my allergies are terrible. I feel like a little pig half the time. I can't help it though. I, I thought garlic, um I thought garlic can can last a freeze, take a freeze. Yeah, uh, Joy, I like this little greenhouse, it, number one, because it was El Cheapo, but I, I probably would feel better if I can bring it up. I'm going to have to find something to sit it on top of to bring it up because it's, it's short, and it's good if you don't have a whole lot of stuff to start, but... I had to rig up my grow lights at the top because the top don't have a crossbar. But the ones here on this shelf, the second shelf, um, I was able to zip tie, the, zip tie it to that particular shelf. And I zip tied the, the shelves themselves. But I have uh, one, two, two more shelves that I need to um, put lights on, and my shop lights that's sitting over here need to be replaced. The bulbs need to be replaced, if I guess they can. So, yeah, so, hi, Grove with Renee. One four four. Thank you. I like the little uh, greenhouse. Um, I think when I paid for it, it was like twenty twenty five dollars, nineteen ninety nine or twenty five dollars, something like that. But um, this is the first one I had for inside. I never used one on the inside. I usually have. I bought one of those shelves at Walmart, and that's in my kitchen area, and I gave it up to put all my canning um, utensils and all that stuff on it because I'm still decluttering. Yes, I'm still decluttering. And um, my room here, it, it's, like I said, it's really, really small. And I'm trying to uh, use it the best way I can and not be cluttered because not only do I have, like, my planning stuff, I have... Like all the things I work with the girls, school stuff. I'm not all my books, of course, but my craft stuff. And I need like a garage that's converted for all the things that I have. And that's not including in the by the kitchen. I have that built in desk uh, with some other business stuff that just been sitting there that I got to go through, declutter that, like throw things away, shred things up. So I have a lot of, I've utilized a lot of space for me and my husband, little room. We both have our own, like, she space, he space. And he said I have all the space because I also have outside, too. Um, I got this from, let me see if I can find that card. Oh, wherever I can find a deal, that's where I go. I don't have a certain spot. Um, but I do get a lot of stuff from Amazon, especially since the pandemic. The store is called Oceans. Oceans. And um, they had a pretty good deal. That was the first time I actually went. 
I just wanted to get out the house, you know, because I don't go anywhere too much. And I, I knew I'd been saying I was going to go to that store. But uh, I went there and got that. I really, that's what I wanted. And they only had like two of those left because of the price. And they did have some of the bigger ones, which was still reasonable. Um, I was on a budget, meaning I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I was only able to afford that one. If I would have, if I had a little bit more money, I would have got the bigger one, and it would have been outside though. And depending on how me and this, because honestly, you don't really need to grow. From from my experience, I really don't need to grow like not a grow like a greenhouse on the inside, um, because my the way I have my lighting, my growth center. I could have probably done better by just getting another uh, shelf, five-tier shelf like I had before. No, it don't hang up. Um, you probably can, um, but I'm in a mobile home, so the wall, you have to find that stud. If you're going to be hanging stuff, you got you to gotta be careful. And I'm not taking a chance on putting no holes up in no ceilings because look at here. So yeah, um, it's 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 good. I mean, if you don't if if you're not starting a lot of things, it works perfect. Um, but you have to you have to be careful. So what I've been trying to do is strategically get stuff started, which my bottom two shelves. I have my heating mat on. So the things that only need heat to start germinating, I put them on those bottom shelves. I get in a in a in a pickle if they need heat and light to start germinating, which most of the time they're gonna need one or the other, from my experience. So once they catch and I see them pop out, then I move them up to the shelves with the lights. And like I showed you guys when I potted up my tomatoes, so I'm gonna show you. This is where they're at now. They're actually got more. All of them have their true leaves now. So these here. They're under the light, and they're very, very, very close to the light um maybe by midweek i can bring them down it was smart to have the greenhouse indoors i have seen a lot of people here in texas lose all their seedlings due to the snow bit. okay by having them yeah um the shelves, the shelves are not, these particular shelves are not adjustable, but they do have a good amount of space in between the shelves. Thank you, Renee. Um, My roses, the okay, the rose that I bought that had the little, you know, that was semi already, you know, like in the cuttings you get from Walmart, they're fine because I brought them in the house. The ones that I had in the bag, stratifying, I did not take them. I took, I haven't taken them out of the bag yet, but I know that they're fine as far as um, they either going to do something or they not, because they have to stratify. And they have been in the refrigerator for sure over two weeks. Then I had them out there in that snow. So. And we're gonna have still a lot of cold nights, so I'm I'm interested to see if they catch him. and I will probably do that later off camera to see if um, they have caught. I will be surprised and happy, of course. And if when I go out there to do it, I will, I'll film it because I really really hope when I pull the pull them out the bag, pull the saran wrap off of them. To see some kind of little growth, I would be so ecstatic because that's my 
it'll be my first uh, successful attempt. And guys, my mom, my mom, her name is Rose. And I've always wanted to make sure that she had plenty of roses. And my mom had a tough last two years since she went into cardiac arrest and been recovering and, and going through surgeries and being grown to where she put herself back part time at work. And, you know, and I want to be able to make sure that she have. Hold on, guys. Somebody's at my door. And. quick guys i miss i haven't seen her like uh oh she happy to child i got the twins and i got the two little ones oh help me yeah that's my baby that's my first grandbaby the twins are like my god babies but they're young enough of course to be their mom young enough to be my daughter uh so they're young enough to be my grandbabies too I haven't seen him like since, um, oh, it's been like two months or so, because they went to see my son uh, in Houston, stay with their dad for like two, for two months since Christmas. He came and got him Christmas, and I'm this is my first time seeing him since. So yeah, I miss my babies. They finna work my nerve, but that's okay. I'm alive, so they can Yeah, they keep me up. Hey, Ray, if, for the ones that know Ray, Ray keep me up too. Him, my husband wanted me to cook them something to eat. It was like 2 o'clock this morning. So, man, I'm going to go get in my bed. I am not cooking nothing. So, yeah. That's all I do is serve someone but I can say you know I'm blessed to be needed I want it and I guess in so many ways I'm used to because they only need me when they want something so that's why lately that DJ come here <laughs> frustrated then. You're tired? You're hot? You're trying to show your sexy? You're showing your sexy. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. Look at that. The TV. Uh-oh. It's your own TV. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Remote. Huh? My remote is right here. It's not for Dakota. Turn the TV in there. Turn it on something for 
Timbo. Yeah, mama go look. Mama gonna go turn it on. Go to, go see. <laughs> Oh Lord, they want my remote. They they ready to come take over now. But yeah, guys, they keep. I ain't gonna know about keeping you young now. I don't think they keep me young. But um, did your mom get a Christmas present? Yes, I've been to. Can yeah yeah I've been trying to get. You know what? That surprised me. No, um, I had. I you was not, trying. You didn't have my new number till today, did you? No, I had it. I just now found but it. I called you, and I forgot when I I told Des I forgot. I think I called the old number because I had pulled up in front of your house and everything. You had. To, I said, "Well, I said, I'm gonna be by after work." I said, she don't hear me. I'm not getting out of this car. I don't find, if I find out who got small number, I'm going to stomp a hole in their ass. You ain't been getting dirty pictures yet? No. I, you took some dirty pictures? No, I got locked out of my, when my ex made me make that new Facebook, uh -huh. I got locked out of it when my phone got messed up. And I couldn't remember the password. And uh -huh. then I got a new phone number, a new phone and all that. Well, the only way to get into it was having the thing sent to my old phone number. Uh -huh. And I had kept trying to do it. Well, it kept sending it. And apparently that person got on there and changed it. And it's like, oh, shh, because I'm recording. Say hi. Hey. <laughs> but they've been sending a lot of spam to people. Oh, no. Well, I, yeah, I got a lot of spam coming. Very oh, no, I don't know about all that. Because I didn't even know. And then my ex was like, you saw it. And I'm like, no. And he was like, you're bringing time to all these pictures. This girl, because he thought I was like, sending him a new the girl with the black hair? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I thought, I didn't know what that was. I just. No, that, that's the person that hacked my Facebook. They've been sending the pictures with their posts on there. They've been the uh -huh. worst ones. They've been sending it to all my friends, to Tegan's grandma, Ooh. everybody. That's but, and they send not pictures of you. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shoot. But yeah, so I've been trying you to. You have to work today? Mm -hmm. I've been trying to report, but Facebook keeps saying it's not against their standards. I'm like, they hacked my Facebook. You can clearly look at my Facebook and see it's the same yeah. picture as a person. Mm -hmm. But they got clothes and diapers and wipes and pajamas and socks and all that. Okay. Just be listening for me. So just in case me and the kids get kicked out, Michael be like, what the? Hey. He been asking when they was going to come. Oh, he at work. Oh. So guys, look. This, is, this here is I might have showed it before, but this is a grow bag. I don't. I thought I gifted this too, but this is supposed to be what you can put your your potatoes in if you're growing potatoes or um, sweet potatoes. It's not. They're not super big to me, but three of them came together. This is where you can. You can peep at it. I bought them because they was three for whatever the price I think I paid for them. And I really thought they was going to be bigger than that because since I am container gardening, I always try to make sure I have stuff that um, I can use. So I don't, I still don't know. Oh, yeah, my nose is just terrible. I don't know if I'm going to use that. Four potatoes. I probably, I might, but I have four, not four, three, two of the square four by fours. So I might use that for them. Um, because I actually have, I have bought two packs of the starter potatoes from the Walmart, and then I have some potatoes that is um. My own potatoes that I want to put in now. So I wanted to make sure I have enough space to do the potatoes. And that's, a, you know, that's cost for a lot of soil, guys. Those things are not cheap. And then, like, I got to fill that bed up. But that bed, I've been, uh, I already put the cardboard down, put more cardboard down. I'm going to go, I'm looking at my window now. I'm going to go out once the snow melts and get 
some of the branches in between me and my neighbor's place. No, I'm not growing sweet potatoes. Number one, because they do vine, and that's why I'm not even growing the watermelons either. As much as I want some, until I have a better organization set up for the things like that, that, that vines and I want to grow, I'm just going to have to opt out. Like, I want corn, but I'm just not going to work myself like that because I can get it to start growing. But when that heat kicks in, I'm out of there. And I don't have a good, you know, I don't have that good water system yet. And even though we're buying now, I'm not going to pay $450 to put a water spigot out there. And if someone tells me $150, then I might work with that. But I'm not paying $450 for someone to put a water spigot out there. And um, I have to, I will redig it back up and take it with me. <laughs> All right, I'm about to go. All right, be safe. The roads are bad. Huh. Oh, okay. It's only like a few little side streets, like the one in between people's houses and stuff. But all the highways and all the main streets are clear. Oh, okay. And I put their car seats on a deep freeze. Okay, that's good because I got to go uh somewhere tomorrow and I'm gonna switch the booster seats out for the car seats. Okay. Okay. Well, Dakota's is like a booster seat; it just has the back on it. That's what D bought her. Okay. So you can put her in a booster seat with seatbelt. She won't get out of it. But that is his little butt. He has to be in the car seat. Where you going? What are you doing? Okay. You know, you're going to be mad at me later because I'm combing the hair. Your mama I already, already know. know. I already know both of them. That's why I didn't even mess with Park Bang. <laughs> and he is. I want, this is what I want to do. I want to cut all around the edges, but I want to leave the top so I can do braids or little twists. You can do braids with it. Whatever. Like I know, but the back's what gets knotted so much, and he's. Worse than D about touching his head. Oh, yeah. But D won't want me to do it. He says, if I do that, he's going to cut all this hair off. He wants me to just do the little edge up right above the ears and by the back of his neck. I'm like, that's not going to change nothing. He's still going to have you. You're not doing it. I'm doing it. That's because y'all don't comb his hair every day. I can cook. That kid hollers. Look here. Notice I can do a lot easier. He going to holler, but he going to holler until he get used to it. The color, she going to be mad at me, but it's going to be fine. Yeah, Dakota, she she gets through it. She'll be mad, but she'll get through it. Dez, he'll try to fight you. Oh, I know. He'll start swinging and everything. Girl, I can't take it. Look, look, look. Ooh. And he got thin hair. She got thicker hair. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Way thicker. Yeah. Oh, and the outside thing of the backpack, because uh -huh. I don't know how much stuff you still had. I got a brand new thing of that blue magic grease or whatever, that, the blue grease. Yeah. And then I got one of the thick... Big cones, a little okay. swirl at the end. Right. And I put some leave in conditioner stuff that's real good and there's tons of rubber ants. You got some detangler? That's what that leave in conditioner stuff okay. is. Okay. It's that fruit tea stuff. That's okay. Good. All right. Well, if I need you, I'll let you know, but I, we, we'll be fine. All right. He ain't going to think about it until he wake up in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Yeah, Joy, did you a lot of potatoes? What? Piss, I heard. I seen your story. Now, when I did my potatoes, I did I did do one grow bag, and, like the size of the one I showed you, but it didn't have that little peekaboo thing. And I did a five-gallon um, bucket. And out of one, two potatoes in each one, uh, I mean, for my first try, I was I was okay because it was my first try. So that's why this year I want to do it in those four by fours to give it more room to possible spread out. So I, I think I got, I got enough to make a meal. And I act like I'm getting ready to start them. Um, I start. I always start them early on the um, inside. I probably sit them in the greenhouse, and they'll be fine. That's what I did uh, and got to jump on them last time. But I actually enjoyed doing the uh, potatoes and harvest them. I think I have a video um, on it somewhere. If it's not on on here, it's on my uh, Facebook. <laughs> Thank you.
I, I have the, the vinyl grow bag, like the 4x4, four four, and I also have the the black, whatever you want to call that material, uh, grow bag. But the, the I see a lot of people growing them in everything, so I guess it's just as long as it's food gradable, it should be fine. One year I tried my uh me some sweet potatoes, but that that a lot of that be depending on excuse me. Ooh, I hate that. Y'all I hate it. I might get on y'all nerve, but it gets on my eyes. Um if I get get my setup the way I want to, and I know, you know, some people may be thinking it's it's fine. I mean it's it's okay. I mean it's better I can see where I started at and where I'm at today is yeah, totally different. But I don't know. It's just like, it's just not <laughs> how I want it. And, may, and, and you know what? I've even thought about it. it may not ever be how I want it. So I'm, I have to, I've been trying to deal with that, that concept too. I may never get it exactly like I want it. So. But you know, pits pits is in the in the desert, so that vinyl might burn up for her. Pits, you well, you already started your potatoes. I gotta can someone find out what's the lowest temperature your moon flowers can go? I need to put these suckers outside. Okay, so, uh, what's she doing? What the hell? Oh. Oh, well, that's out. So I just end up sitting in this. Um, thank you, bitch. Yet. Let me see if I can turn it around so y'all can see where I sat them in front of that window. I just said it. I just sat them up there inside of one of those um, stackables. What's up, sugar mama? What's that? That's not for you to play with. What's that? I 
It's, that's my plant stuff. BB, let you play with that? Yeah. Mm hmm. Wow. Oh, put that back in there, Dakota. I know, but you can't play with that. What you what you trying to do? Oh no. Let me see. That's a plant. Let me see it. Thank you. Well, I don't know. Now this is <laughs> this is gonna be my exercise. Do you think? What? What's that? That's a flower plant. Need flower watering can. Huh? Okay. That they want to know what everything is, guys. Everything. I want this a chair. You want to get your chair? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. You ready? What you ready for? I'm going. Uh. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Oh Lord. What? Come on. That's not yours. That's mine. <laughs> huh? I know, but that's that's grandma's. Wait, wait, girl. Where you trying to go? You ready to get your hat on? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. What are you trying to do? Wait a minute. Look, let me move it. Let me move it. Let me move it. Let me move it. They think this is toy. Come on. That's mine to say shout outs. What do you want? Come on. That one? Let's say motivational topics. Look, let me show you. There you go. Do I? Do it. Jesus. Look here, y'all finna have to get up out of here. You're gonna have to go. Yeah. Why? Yeah, DJ, stack that back up. degrees. Well, even though we're going to have some 60 degree temperatures later next week, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm going to knock you out. I think I'm going to, okay, I'm going to put, let me put you down and then I'll put that down. Okay. Okay. So get out. No, 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 no. Don't put him up here. Sit. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hi, Maureen. How are you doing? It's been a long time. I don't do many lives anymore. Sometimes I, I just do it just because. They're going to work the crap out of us next week when I go back to work. Missy, how many uh how many um sweet potatoes did you get when you did that? Do not don't mess with my plant stuff, man. We're gonna have a problem. See the twins know not to mess with stuff. These here, uh-uh. Everything is like a circus to them. It's fun.
So guys, who all who all was affected by the uh winter storm Viola? Oh, you only got four? Oh, okay. See, like, it's just me and my husband most of the time. So I, I probably end up having to only do, like, three, cut me, you know, bury three of them, and whatever comes from that be, be enough. Even though I have people that I can um donate to or sell to or whatever, but... I, I think about the work I got for and some curly fries since it was just too much sun for them, yeah. Yeah, Viola had a name. That was one of Storm Viola. <laughs> okay. I didn't it took it took a minute. For me to realize that they actually did name, like, I knew they had names for winter storms, but this year I paid a whole lot of attention to the names. And actually, they they named them just like they named hurricanes. And these particular uh, winter storms, I want to say they 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 had already used like the alphabet and they had started doing some other kind of extra numbers, names or whatever. Miss it as you lose power. I don't know how to turn this on. Turn this off. So we um Oh my gosh. Guys, I do not know how to turn this freaking game thing on. I'm gonna go bananas. Oh, they gotta come to oh here you go. Bye bye. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, um, Yeah, um, so that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about on the video that I'm going to, uh, that I got a, a release, which uh, publish it, because it's on private right now. Um, that's one of the things, I think what frustrated me more was not having heat. It wasn't even about the lights. Because I could have maneuvered around the lights, but it was so cold, you know, um, and the fact of the matter is they just didn't go off by themselves. Someone turned them off. You know, we got to remember, you know, we give it, I'm not going to say we're giving, but 
we have to take control of our own stuff because much power for someone to have is to have the control of if you're going to have lights if you're going to have water and they literally turned the stuff off and i get it i get it to a certain point that you're trying you try not to make a big mess where it affect every single person but some of the stuff was without warning so that was kind of hard you know you one minute you go in there you, you just wash some dishes so you just washed your hands only to come back five minutes later to get ready to cook and you have no power I mean no water you can't flush your commode yeah i'm glad i'm okay missy you know i'm glad uh i'm just glad everybody made it through this here i mean we I think nationwide it was 47 states they said that was affected at some point, some kind of way. But Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, for sure, and Oklahoma got hit hard. And that's only because they're not used to having those type of temperatures. It's not the fact that we've never had a snow. But those temperatures like that for that length of time had been like forever like i think they said 1949 was like the one of the severe like the negative five or something like that in 1980 something yeah we did not anticipate the length that we would have to do with our lives and for me like i said it, it wasn't it wasn't even the lights that really, really got me. Now, mind you, because the lights wasn't an issue, issue, the real issue for me, it was for some other people because you have to think, you know, we have a lot of elderly people, a lot of sick people, you know, a lot of new babies, you know, people that's on life support systems and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get that part. That backup generator is only going to last so much when you have that many people have to use it. But that length of time was really, really crazy. And Mind you, like for me, I've been, I don't want to say prepping, but some people may call it prepping. I call it preparedness. I've been preparing myself for certain scenarios. And I just have to say God had his own timing for this scenario to come in quicker. Because um, I had been telling my husband for a long time. You know, when I was picking this up, picking it up, and he kept looking at me crazy like, girl, you tripping. You know, like, we don't need this and we don't need that. But I'm glad that I followed my mind. You know, he's my husband and I allow him to leave, you know, and I kind of like step back on some things and, you know, that trust be there. He got me. But at the end of the day, you know, me being who I am is like, okay, he may have me, but I'll make sure I have me and him too. So I'm glad that I purchased that camping stuff that I purchased that you see I was letting the girls use. You know, uh, we get s'mores off that my little single butane stove that lights up. You know, we was able to have hot coffee, um, take the bottle of water. And, and get it warmed up so we can wash off, you know, but that's one thing. That can only go so far. And I only had two of those canisters, so I was thankful that I didn't have to use the extra one, so I at least have a spare for that. Um, but having the tent, having the camping gear, the canisters, the, the we talked about this, uh, I talked about this, I think, with Best Yet before, you know, just having the cast iron skillets and, and, and pot set that my husband blessed me with for my birthday. Those are things that you can use outside if you had to camp outside or cook outside. So that was um I thought someone was at my door. So we had the processed food for us, the canned food that I was fortunate to not be afraid. And I learned how to can. So I had stuff in there if necessary. 
my deep freezer was filled. I wasn't worrying about it going bad because it was cold enough to keep that cold. You know, um, it it would take it would have took a long time for my deep freezer to um, do any thawing out. It was nowhere near at any kind of temperature for anything in my refrigerator to go bad. But um, we've always kept water. So that was a good thing. We did have drinking water, which we're under a boil band, so we cannot. They even say, you know, it's not even good to um, take baths and showers, you know, under the boil band. Boil band. So, you know, you got to do what you have to do. But I do have a, a propane grill that was donated to me, I said earlier. I have my barbecue, my charcoal grill that if necessary, but I had to light a fire, but it wasn't even, a, like I said, it was nothing about the lights. It was about the cold. So the cold makes a big difference on your survival. You know, it's cold. So you can't just say, I'm going to go outside and cook us a meal and be okay with it in the, in the temperatures that it was. It was so cold out there. You don't, you're trying to shelter yourself from that. So, and knowing that someone else had control over that, that, that was more frustrating. And bad enough, the lights was going off, but then you turned the water off. So that was like, no. So even though I have the water, to, uh, IBC tote filled, you know, now with water a decent amount. It was it was unusable because it was froze. So that was another thing. Um, but I did tell my husband that. You know, I watch a lot of off-grid stuff. I watch a lot of people that um, can and do things as far as. Now, I don't want to say say they be preppers because I don't, I don't, I don't even call it preppers. It's people that just prepare. But I will be getting me a little mini wood stove Mama? that I can actually Mama, set. You need to Girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you, sis. You broke my crap. Yeah. Yeah, that's not cool, Dakota. Okay, you gotta get out. You, you she brought it back to me. She didn't broke my little my my wheel. What? Okay, that's enough. Go find something else to play with. Get that's not not to play with that. No, put the buckets up, child. Mom, what's that? So, guys, I don't, I'm, I don't know. Oh my God! So, uh, Pitts, what's the lowest y'all, uh, her? I'm going. Uh, uh, we're not going in there yet. What's the lowest y'all drop to? Hmm. Yay! Yay! What y'all need these chairs for? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, go back in the living room. Go with go go in there with BB now. They wanna sit under me. Yeah. They come in handy, I can tell you that. Yes, they're busy. They, these are these these grandbabies love to be outside. The other the twins, they like to be inside, and I don't keep them. Hi, Erica. I don't have them a lot, um, but I have a lot because they they attend school where I work at. Plus, they mom makes sure they get over here back and forth. I can have the grandbabies a lot too, but look at here. Whew, Lord have mercy. I don't know if I can handle all four of them like for a long time. I'm actually gonna have them two overnight, my grandbabies. Forty-four. 
piss uh that that wasn't that bad you see my the 44 to 46 overnight that wasn't bad So guys, I mean, even if, because right now we like we have a lot of women and stuff on, on here. If you haven't, only this is for those that have never did it. If you have never built anything with any kind of, whether it's a power tool, whether it's a um, the one with the battery, the cordless. I advise you to start learning how to use those things like now, as well as those that don't run by battery or whatever. Because let me tell you, anything can happen to where you have to know how to do those kind of things, whether it's for yourself or assist your, your you know, your guy friend, your husband. Uh, we need to be, yeah, we need to stay ready because not trying to put you know, a dark cloud over us, but as a as a community, we lose it. We lose our men. You know, and that's of all races. We lose our men, and whether it's to the system, whether it's to another person, whomever. But we lose our men, and what happens when we do? We don't know. Most people don't know what to do. And I can say back when I was young, I've always been active i've always been like a tomboy i always wanted to know how to do the same thing my brothers them knew how to do you know in exceptional opinion standing up you know but um i took auto mechanics class i got out of cosmetology i took uh auto mechanics i wanted to know how to change my oil do my brakes now i'm not gonna say i'll be perfect at it right now but i'm pretty sure it wouldn't be hard for me to get back in in the swing of trying to do it Yeah, I mean, you you have to um you have to learn how to do these things. You know, it's a time for uh, to be that girly girly. We all as women like to be girly girly. We like to be spoiled. We like to be pampered. But my life don't consist of that kind of time that I have to to just worry about whether I'm getting my hair fixed, nail fixed, or whatever. I mean, it may not be the best um, if I would have went to someone else, but I had to learn how to do my own hair, whether it was this way, whether it was buying a wig, whether it was braiding my own hair, whether it was combing my own hair, styling it. I mean, I used to spend seventy, eighty dollars. This was back before it was those hairstyles. I mean, I had to start cutting and budgeting what to spend my money on, you know. I can tell you, I wish 29 years ago I, I was into the gardening and stuff like that. I mean, I, I'm playing catch up versus some for those that already been doing it. But it's just, it's, it's, man, I can see my husband's face when he realized that. When I pull that butane little stove out, like, dang, I was talking crazy, talking crazy like she was crazy. And my wife came through for us, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to think it's not just about if I'm going to grow a flower or a tomato. It's right now. It's about learning how to be, live back off that land that we didn't got too bougie to do. As a, uh, you know, we talking about society, not just like I said. It's not even a color thing. We have gotten so spoiled with technology that we have gotten so lazy, and our kids, we have allowed them to become lazy because we don't want to get out there to show them or to teach them or to learn with them on how to do things. We will probably have less issues if we was raising our kids to know how to go outside to do chores. Just 
I mean, it, that, that still comes with reading because some things you do need, you know, like instructions and, and we have to read the fine print ourselves. But instead of making them or setting those rules for them, we have allowed them to tell us what they didn't want to do or they don't want to do. Therefore, we pick up that tab and we do it for them. We couldn't tell our grandparents or our parents that we're not going to do something. Right, Missy. I don't mind paying people to do certain things for me. It's a difference with being self-sufficient or being independent than paying someone to do it for you because you just right now don't feel like it. You still know how to do it and you're capable of doing it. But if you can, you know, it's going to be time where, hey, you know what? I really don't feel like cutting a jaw today. I'm just going to find one of these teenagers and I'm going to pay them some money to cut the yard for me. That's the difference. You have some people have no inkly idea, you know, how to do it, let alone women don't even know how to cook. They think all they need is a certain shape or a certain whatever skill, sex skills. That's what's going to get them through life. And it is what it is. My grandmother told me. A woman should always know how to cook, clean, take care of those kids, and, and you know, and her man. You, you have to be kind of like that superwoman. And back then, you kind of have to, it ain't, she never said you had to be beautiful. She never said you have to have a certain shape. And if you ever think yeah, I mean, if you ever think about it and you look back, on even whether it's a photo or whatever, you can see some mis what appear to us as some mismatch couples. And you would never understood how did they get together because the qualities that they had meshed. It balanced them. But me building those raised beds was one of the best things I can do because my husband bought that first one and I can tell you right now, it is rigged up to be able to stand up. The ones that I built myself is strong. Everything that I, I got or I built is much sturdier and it can last longer. But I would have never did that if it wasn't for me being the person I am educational I to think he paid XYZ dollars for this and I was thankful he asked me what I wanted I told him yes baby what's she doing BB what's my BB oh. huh, he a toy is this your toy BB the llamas huh So, but yeah, yeah, Missy. I mean, skinny man didn't care if you if they, if, if old girl was kind of thick. Then you you did have a few sillies, you know, back then. But again, you have to think, you know, men was taught to make sure they had a a woman that can provide for us the things at home and be able to take care of those kids and make sure, you know, excuse me, when he go out to work and come in, he have a meal. We have women nowadays that don't know how to do none of that. They don't they don't know how to do the skills for a woman, let alone the skills that is unisex as far as building. And I'm happy to see a lot of women now that's is really getting in touch with building things or trying to learn how to build things because again we have our men are all, not always present and just because you're not in a relationship or just because you're not married. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to survive. You have a lot of good, strong single mothers and fathers that is carrying double weight and they're doing it. But only way you're going to even see any kind of light at the end of the tunnel, you have to, you do have to start somewhere. You have to try. So if you do not try, 
you'll never make it. You may mess up. That 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 first project may look crazy, but it's not about that first project. It's about getting yourself familiarized with those tools. You know, I don't want to be swinging an axe, but your girl gonna be picking up all kind of gears. The stuff that I don't have, what? You better not touch that. No. What? Y'all not gonna be taking all that stuff out. I'm not doing all that cleaning up. I don't like to clean up. <sighs> but um, yeah. So the things that I have already, it helped me for the things that I needed it to help me with. The things that I did not have, like that that wood burning stove, that small wood burning stove that can fit in my mobile home, that I'm gonna get. And I'm going to get it installed. If love lady got to sit here and cut that circle out herself and get that pipe out, I'm going to, I'm going to have me that. that was, that was a hard one for me, you know, and <laughs> my husband's like, baby, you ain't playing, huh? He seen me. I was already online uh, pricing them, getting, without my husband, I have to have the things I'm going to need to survive. Yeah, I've been seeing uh, those. They they're pretty lightweight, and that's and that that's always a good option to get familiar with um, to use them with. But one thing about like where I'm at, well, at least my mobile home, like I don't have like like little outlets outside uh, that's you know even covered up like for safety. I don't have that kind of stuff where I'm at. Well, at least my mobile home don't have that. Um, so things that I will, I always right now have to, you know, get is like the, like the ones like this that I have to take the battery out and put them back in. So I can get a, I can get electric one to learn, but your girl want her a gas operated one. Or something. I don't even want the technically the the this power the one with the battery thing because until I get solar, cause my husband, he said, "Babe, how much you gonna cost for us to get solar?" I said, "Hey, you gotta look at the prices." He don't ever want to go through that again either. You never can say, um, never. We 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 said that, and Texas got a bad. Sn you better not be on my plans, DJ. Granny gonna get you. But uh, now he's really seeing a lot of the stuff that I was talking about. Honey, want he, babe? We finna get a generator. We don't have one because that's not that we wasn't that wasn't on our list. But now he is certain things he start. He's he want to now prioritize. So. Yeah, I couldn't wait to get, shoot. Baby gave me some green lights, but shoot. Hey, little lady going to be going retarded. I'm going to make sure. Because I, I haven't, I, he don't get it. I have not been doing all my research for no reason. You know, and hi, Miss Red, going to the kitchen. I've been doing my research for a long time. And some things I talk about, some things I don't. But that is one of the things, like, you know, I try to have these conversations with him. And he think I'm crazy. He Well, he was thinking I was crazy, you know. And now he like. But you do have an educated wife that's really smart and can really think and, and not scared to do, like, laboring. I heard us. I'm scared of guns and I'm scared of knives. Stuff like that, I'm scared of. It depends on how they're being used. But I'm not scared to work hard. I may complain if it gets too hot because of my allergies and my asthma. But I will work. If it's not too hot out there, smothering heat, I'm going to work. I will be out there all day until my project is done. But sometimes, because of health reasons, I have to learn to stop and bring him behind in the house. So now he's like, 
uh, how much generator cost? How much do that water pump for your your tote cost? I mean, it's like everything. In the, all I'm saying, like, so that green light, you know, and it is sad though that it did take him to experience some of this here stuff and to really realize my wife was really onto stuff. She wasn't just doing stuff just because she wanted to spend money, you know, and I had to do things in ways um, that wasn't breaking our budget, of course. May I help you, sir? So, but now that he sees how important it is, I think, I don't think he's just going to let me go bananas, but I do think he's going to be a lot uh, more flexible with me on spending uh, to get certain things down. He's going to always ask questions, you know, well, what, what's this for and what are we going to need this for? And But I think it'll be a whole lot easier for him to let go of that wallet versus not. So, he's already... He's he been crossed over with the gardening and everything. First he thought I was being wild and crazy, but now he knows that it's all uh, you know, it's very useful for what we're doing. I can tell you now, if you have never built anything, and you know what? You do not have to um you do not have to have any power tools to build stuff. It do makes it easier um, for you. But... You do not have to um, have them. So, at the end of the day, you know, if you have some nails, nails can work just as fine. Okay. Yes. You know, I don't really say much about it anymore. Uh, too much. Quit fussing. What are y'all fussing for? I'm sorry, guys. That boy had found a, one of my sticks, and he beating on my doggone cabinet. But, yeah, hammer and nails will work just fine. You know, um, he, my husband, he now, you know, I, I hear his conversations now he have on the phone, and he now talks so highly of, you know, just the things that I'm growing and um you I, I can tell that he's very proud. He's he, what? Mm. So that's a good thing. Um at first he didn't understand even the canning process. So now he, he understands that. 
it's it's sometimes it's that after fact and even because someone may not agree with you or understand it that don't stop doing it because someone else the way someone else feel you know you keep doing it because believe it or not it's going to come in handy you know whether it's for you as a union or you by yourself you know so don't don't mess up learning a skill because someone else don't think it's necessary it's very necessary because that skill you you're learning may be to help okay. So, yeah, um, he still do not understand my purpose of graveling my garden area. He don't understand that. And he won't, he won't understand it until I do it so he can really see how beneficial it would be for him. So... It'll be beneficial for me, but it'll be beneficial for him. He'll get the benefits of it, not having to go in there and mow and weed eat, you know, under those beds or whatever. So that's the reason why I want to grab with that area, because I don't want to be walking through there and a high grass brush my leg. I'm going to think something is crawling on me. You know, I don't want to wait and wait for him to find time to we eat you know if he showed well i ain't gonna say it's not all but it, he don't have to really show me how to use it i mean i'm pretty sure i can use the weed either but that's the thing i i want to eliminate that particular job in that area there no weed eating no cutting no pulling weeds so sometimes i tell him if you just listen to me if you just listen to me it'll get better it'll be okay but if that's the job he want to do, I'm going to let him do it. Well, guys, I planted my petunias and my uh, moonflowers. And I am I know by the time I get them outside, they're going to be extremely big. Well, I mean... Oh, girl, I done made so many dinners from the garden. He 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 caught that effect, you know, and again, it goes back to now. I don't like I don't really rub it in his face, you know, they, you know, got things that I've all the process through my canner or whatever. Um, I can I can hear how he's proud, how he's happy that I am doing what I'm doing. And how it really is benefiting us as a family and those, you know, whether it's us as a family or those that's willing to spend some money to purchase some of it. We've had we've had people to want to do that and which is fine with me. You know, um, if I have extra and someone want to purchase some beans that I can. So be it. You know, um, of course, I sell jellies and jams all the time now since I've learned how to do them. So that's a great thing, you know. Um, and just to hear people say, I shall sure hope them grandbabies ain't been over here or nothing fell on my eye, uh, aloe. Keep my eyes on you. Um, but I'm I'm so you know proud of myself just to hear those that do uh, like my jams and jellies and they'll let me know, man. You know what? I don't even go when I go to the store. I don't even worry about picking it up from the store. You know that's why I call you and and that's a great thing. That's a great feeling to know that someone likes something that you're doing. You know, um, so. One of the biggest things that one of my first success was my greens. And I tell everybody, I love my greens. I love my greens. I can I can do them all day long. Um, I have struggles. And I only, I only plant what I eat. 
this year is the year that I'm planning things that I've never eaten before. I'm only doing maybe like one. Now, like the bok choy, I planted a lot of that because I love cabbage. I love greens. So I knew that that, was, that wasn't going to be an issue for me. But um, this year I am planting some first, but I'm only planting like one of those first because I really want to know if I like it. And I'm also learning that some people, I have at least three additional people outside of my home that they like some things, certain things that I've never tried before, but they've tried. So they're very interested in that. Like I don't really eat hot food, but I grow peppers, hot peppers. And that's because my son eat it. My brother eat it. The twins mom eat it. My uh, grandbaby's mom them eat it. So they do not go to waste. Uh, that's the great thing about that. Um, but like my bell peppers, oh no, I cook with my bell peppers. I do that very well. So um, I did introduce gardening to my mom <coughs> after she's she had a cardiac arrest. And my mom and me, we're kind of like two peas in a pod majority of the time. We we're very active. We got to We have to work real working women. We're so used to working. Sitting down is just like not in our blood. So I'm always multitasking. I'm always doing more than one thing. <coughs> what am I planning? What am I planning? I am planting. Right now that I'm starting, <coughs> these are the things that I'm starting because I already have things in the garden that I don't have to replant. So that's number one. Number what I'm planting is bell peppers. I have a variety of bell peppers, a variety of peppers that I'm planting. I have some eggplant, three varieties of eggplant, one each that I'm planting because I've never grown bell pep I mean eggplant and I've never I can't recall. What are y'all doing? They're gonna give me a heart attack. Um, I have planted. Tomatoes, variety of tomatoes. I, I usually plant only like the cherry tomatoes because that's what it's for cooking. And believe it or not, my cherry tomatoes, they gave me a lot of tomatoes. I've never, I, I had no issues with them. Um, I did not deal with a lot of pests on them. Knock on wood, I'm going to pray on it. Lord, I'm going to pray on it. I've never had to have one of those green hornworms. I don't think, not on my tomatoes. I think I've seen something that was trying to grow on my bell peppers. I don't know if that was a hornworm or just a worm. It was green, but it was little. And I got it off. Not with my hand. Um, of course, I'm growing my lettuce. I'm growing basil, a variety of basil. Um, I'm getting ready to start my peppermint, my variety of mints, in the rest of my... Um, Contain uh, what you call them thingies? Stackables. Um, I'm trying to color coordinate them. I have some blue stackables that I'm gonna use for that. What else? Um, um, what or what's your zone? Or my zone is eight B, and just like. Uh, uh, Diva said before I've said it before I'm in 8B and my 8B is totally different than somebody else's 8B that's just a number you have to kind of just know your area I mean that is kind of like a hypothetical prediction of what it should do and be able to do it doesn't do that so I kind of do things my way, what works for me. Um, if you go back and catch my fall seed starting or my fall planting or transplanting, 
you will tell you you will see i i put my stuff outside like way before a lot of people i was already harvesting some of my fall stuff when people was just putting theirs in Hey. He didn't steal your chips. <laughs> but um I've grown a variety of things and of course this year is what I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of look, get out of here playing. Go in there with BB and, and, and Lana. Go go with your uncle. Um this year is the year of me trying to do more flowers. Uh mostly for aesthetic, but also for I guess you could say pollination as well. So, yeah, make sure when you when you find out, it's good to know your zone. It is good to know that. Uh, some people's zone is on point. Um, some people, it's just your setup, the zone itself. I mean, I'm telling you, you have to know, it, you have to know everything that you're working with. Put it like that. I I have. That was my screen door open. I thought somebody was at my door, man. But for me, my 8B is crucial to me because of where I'm at as far as my mobile home. I don't have an outside watering system for a spigot that can run from just water from the house, period. I don't have that kind of setup. It's only about three mobile homes in this row. It's about 14 of them all together. But it's only about three of them that have a water spigot. Get that. Get, DJ. Because you're going to get an old-fashioned pop-pop. But, so, that makes it hard when you get down to watering my garden so i had to come up with creative ways to be able to do that and it's easy said than done to just lugging water outside from inside that's not pleasant at all so i don't have a water spigot out i don't have an extra plug out otherwise i would have had my greenhouse equipped outside with the heat sources all that the grow lights all that stuff would have been outside but because I don't have the extra um, hookups, so it's really, really hard. Thank you, uh, Nikki, for coming by. But um, when you don't have that kind of setup like someone in a regular house do, um, or even someone that have more space to even work with, you have to figure out how can you make what you have work for you. So I had to learn to build things to help me. Well, I don't want to get on the ground. I don't want to be putting my hand down in the ground and reach for bugs. The elevated raised garden beds was for me. The um, the containers was for me. As well as I had to figure out, okay, now, how am I going to water this? So this is getting old. I'm getting tired. I could have easily said I'm done because it's not easy. Uh, trying to water something um, and grow a lot of things when you don't have a water source outside other than your tub or your kitchen sink or whatever. So I chose to look around, find me an IBC soap, of course, through my research on what else I can use. I could have got some barrels and I could have got those things too. And it may be something down the line I eventually get. But what can I get that's going to take the least amount of space but do an effective job where I can continuously have a water source? 
So the IBC toe came in mine. Then that was not an easy job either. So I had to kind of go inside of here. What are you doing? What are you meddling with? You better not be in that kitchen. So. I thought. Look at him. You're going to have to make some kind of structure tall enough. So you can make a ramp. So you can have. The water flow in there. And somebody probably would think. Why you just didn't put gutters on your on your place? We wasn't buying this place. Thank you, Renee. Have a good day. Thank you for coming by. So I couldn't I couldn't just tap these people's place and put up a, a gutter system. They 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 could have put a gutter system up. None of us over here have gutter system. But I said, okay, what can I do? To take with me if we don't buy this here what can i do so i had to build something that was portable i built and i just kept researching kept researching and i found something that was going to work that worked and so far the system i have out there it do work um i may have to improvise and get a better Roofing, sturdy, more sturdy roofing, and maybe tilt, bring it up a little higher, so it have a, a good, a better, a higher angle. But overall, it's doing a whole lot better, and because of that, I start seeing progress on that toe getting filled up. Now, that's a nice size toe. I, I want to say it's in between. I know it's bigger than two seventy five. I think when I looked heat, I keep saying I'm gonna get me an extra one. I, I'll use the backup. Honestly, if I can find, if I can get two more, of them, I wouldn't care. I have because I don't want to run out of water. I don't want to have that issues. And of course, you know, that's a that was a bad thing that happened with us with the freezing. So you never know if you have to go to the point where that's your water source. And during the summer, because we have such hot summers, I want to make sure I have enough water. To last me throughout the summer. Um, well, guys. I've been on here long enough. I do appreciate all the company. I am about to release a video I shot this morning. So, do anybody have any questions or anything, any advice? All right, guys. Be safe. I'm going to go. Catch you on the next one. What happened? She's trying to take her mask.